What is up, my fellow movie lovers? Austin Fullwider coming right back at you with my favorite subject, my favorite filming style in cinema history, and that is the film noir. Now, I will admit before I begin this video that film noir is not a specific genre as recognized by film critics. It's not a genre that we can easily put movies into. However, if you look at a lot of films that are considered film noir, then you notice that they all share a lot of similar qualities. That can be including character development, shading, lighting, plot, subject matter. All of these things constitute a classic film noir movie, and these are the things that I will be discussing in this essay. So the reason that I chose film noir and the reason that I love film noir above all other styles of movie is because I believe that film noir is like the classic art of movie making. Just like the classic painters, uh, the neoclassic painters to be precise, the German expressionists expressed their emotion through colors and shading in their paintings, film noir is the medium that directors use to express their stories through lighting, through different video effects, audio effects, and subject matter in general. It's the most expressionist way of making a movie, in my opinion. But in order to truly understand the dark and gritty subject matter of film noir and the dark and gritty filming style of film noir, we have to understand where American audiences were when film noir was at its peak. So in order to understand that, we need to look at the 30s and 40s. So in the 1930s and 40s, America had just exited the Great Depression and also had just exited World War I and were getting involved in World War II or in case of earlier noir, were leading up to World War II, where there were conflicts all over the globe. So it's almost like we discussed in class with John Ford's movies, how he made Stagecoach and then experienced World War II and saw all of the horrors of the world and then came out and made The Searchers, in which his film style was more realistic, his characters were more realistic and more disillusioned, I guess you could say. Um, America as a whole became disillusioned with the world. We were less apt to accept the classic storytelling where there was a perfect hero. He would enter into some kind of conflict. The conflict would be resolved and he would get the girl. We began to understand that maybe life isn't exactly like that. Life is more complicated. And therefore, in film, if we want film to reflect real life, we were beginning to understand that real life included people that weren't perfect. And even though they are the protagonists, we don't have to expect them to be perfect. They still have their flaws. And film noir really capitalized on that. Um, a lot of the characters in film noir movies aren't the same fairy tale perfect characters that we saw in earlier movies. So let's go into what makes a noir a noir. So as I mentioned earlier, we have these specific characters that you can see throughout all noir movies. And the first is an imperfect male protagonist. As I mentioned earlier, usually in Hollywood before noir, the protagonist was this perfect conception of a hero that the audience would want to follow, would want to get into the shoes of. But with noir came the introduction of a male protagonist that was flawed. He wasn't the perfect human. He could be a retired detective. He could be just off the force. He could be a disgruntled worker. The main idea in noir was that the male protagonist went through some sort of hardship whether it was financially, whether he lost a loved one, it could be tragedy, but he went through some sort of hardship. And the plot of a noir movie was to kind of help him move on from this hardship, which would have resonated with audiences after the Great Depression and during World War II. Another thing to note in a noir movie, as far as characters go, is the introduction of the femme fatale. So, prior to noir movies, Women were seen in the movies as these unobjectionable love interests for men. They hardly ever had any kind of character depth, which is obviously not true to real life. So what noir movies did was they gave them this new role which had more depth. Granted, it probably wasn't a very realistic portrayal of women, and it might have been unfair, but women in noir movies were given this role of the femme fatale, where basically they would lead the men astray. Like, they had their own agenda, and they would manipulate the man into helping them accomplish their needs, or they would manipulate the man into straying off his moral track. 
So it might not exactly be equality for women in movies, but it was a huge step forward as they were finally given some kind of character depth rather than just being the pretty face to star opposite of the male protagonist. For example, in the movie Double Indemnity, Walter Neff, who's a smooth-talking insurance salesman, meets a femme fatale character by the name of Phyllis D. Trixon, who basically manipulates Neff into killing her husband to get the insurance money. So, like I was saying earlier, the femme fatale may not have been a very positive representation of women in cinema, but it was a huge step forward. They actually had characters rather than just being this face on the screen. Alright, so now let's talk about one of the most obvious characteristics of noir movies, and I'm of course talking about lighting and visual effects. So, noir movies can directly be traced back to German Expressionism, which was an artistic movement in Germany at the time, where artists depicted these events in their portraits, but it became obvious that they weren't just depicting events, they were also conveying the emotion of the events through lighting and shading. There is this term in art called chiaroscuro, where artists would use lighting and shading to articulate the different aspects of their paintings. Basically, Noir took that, the chiaroscuro idea, and used lighting, and shading especially, because shading actually is more important than lighting in a lot of Noir movies, to emphasize the mood, the characters, the kind of emotional impact that a scene should have on the audience. So whenever you see a dark and looming character, he's darkly lit. And whenever a character is stepping into the light, whether in the plot or in any kind of emotional aspect, the character literally steps into the light. In fact, in film noir, you could almost say that the lighting is a character in the movie. The lighting represents the plot and makes the audience feel what the director wants the audience to feel just through the lighting. And if you don't believe me, if you don't think that lighting does have an effect on your emotions, then just take a look at these two pictures. So both of these pictures are of the same location. These were taken on MTSU's campus, but with different lighting. It was different weather. So notice that the picture on the left is more of a sunny day, and the picture on the right is more of an overcast day with darker lighting. So on the left, you could see in a movie, that scene would be perfect for like a joyous occasion, for like a gathering, some kind of, you know, just happy scene. Whereas on the right would be perfect for like, say, a funeral or some sad occasion. Like if you want your audience to feel sadness, you would put the actors into the scene on the right. If you were to switch those two, like if you were to have a funeral in the happy <laughs> kind of picture, the happy kind of setting on the left, then it would almost be like mocking the event that's happening. It would completely throw the audience off and wouldn't get the emotion that you were initially intending for them to have. Um, and the same if you were to have a joyous occasion or some kind of happy occasion in the scene on the right. You just wouldn't have that kind of emotional emphasis. And noir directors understood that. They understood that lighting directly impacted the audience's way of thinking about their movie. So they used lighting, like I said earlier, as kind of another character in the movie. They emphasize what they want you to feel when viewing the scene. A perfect example of how lighting can affect the emotions of the audience can be found in Citizen Kane. And although Citizen Kane is not technically considered a full-on noir style of filming, it does completely emphasize my points on lighting um, in noir settings. And it does have noir lighting throughout. So notice that the scene starts out in kind of a cheery mood, everyone's joking around, and then Kane himself turns off the light. So notice what kind of effect this has on the scene around him. The corners are in darkness, and then as Kane goes to set out his principles to make his declarations, uh, he lays them down on the table, he is plunged into complete darkness. The other two characters in the scene are still in the light, but notice that Kane, who is a flawed individual and is starting on a dark path, is actually in darkness. So this is a perfect example of how directors can use lighting to emphasize the points of the plot and to convey the plot. And notice how his hands and the paper are in light, 
but he himself is in darkness, representing his good intentions, but maybe not the best character. And it's quite an interesting example from a classic movie. All right, let's move on to the last aspect of noir movies that I'm going to discuss in this video. Um, and that is the non-standard plot. Okay, so as I mentioned, in early Hollywood, the plot was usually a perfect, morally upstanding protagonist that the audience could identify with, who meets the female counterpart, the love interest of the movie, and eventually reaches a conflict where he has to make a decision. And then at the end, he makes the right decision, ends up with the love interest happily ever after. Well, noir completely shattered these expectations in audiences, because they didn't conform to that kind of meeting the love interest and all's well ends well. Roger Ebert was even quoted as saying that when you watch a noir movie, the directors make it so that at no point do you think that there can possibly be a happy ending. Which I think is very interesting because in noir movies, it's not usually a happy ending. The character meets a femme fatale, usually, who I guess could be the female counterpart, but she leads him astray and then he needs to find his way out by himself. He was struggling at the beginning of the movie, and usually at the end he's still struggling. It might be a happy ending, but it's not the conventional happy ending. It's not the ending where everyone's okay and everyone can just move on with their lives. Everyone at the end of a noir film is affected by the events that took place in the film. The conventional storytelling just goes completely out the window. For instance, in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, which is not technically a completely noir film, it doesn't have all of the aspects of noir, but in a lot of ways it's representational of the noir style, uh, with the lighting and with the storytelling most importantly. And you'll notice that in Vertigo, the climax of the movie hits a completely completely the wrong point. Usually the climax comes at the end of the movie and then the resolve comes at the end. It's a descending resolve into the end of the movie. But in Vertigo, the climax reaches in the middle of the movie. You discover things that the characters in the movie don't know themselves. It's a completely different way of telling a story. That's what noir allowed filmmakers to do. Since it was more of a nitty-gritty kind of way of making a movie, it allowed directors to experiment with the way that you could tell a movie. And, you know, the hero doesn't necessarily get a happy ending. It can be kind of a sad ending. And they never give the impression throughout the movie that a happy ending is what a hero would get, because in real life, a happy ending isn't completely cut out black and white. Why should it be in the cinema, especially in the noir style? And that's what really sets apart noir from the rest of the movies at the time, because we're looking at movies like Wizard of Oz and Casablanca and Gone with the Wind at the time, and noir completely comes in and shatters those expectations that audiences have, and it's mainly through their storytelling, which is completely revolutionary for the time, and I don't know if that kind of revolutionary filming has happened since, but it is very evident to see noir in modern films. You can see the influence that it had on so many modern directors. Look at people like Quentin Tarantino. They take these aspects of noir, the lighting, the style of storytelling, and they further it into the next generation of movies. Look at Pulp Fiction. Some of the lighting in Pulp Fiction completely resembles the noir filming from even 60 years earlier, which is fantastic because these directors realize they can use the lighting to tell their story. They can use it to express the emotion of the movie that they're making. And that's a complete throwback to these early noir films in the 30s and 40s. And also, if you look at some of the modern movies like Michael Clayton, then you can see the effect that noir lighting and noir storytelling has even on modern audiences and how well, most importantly, how well it does with modern audiences. Even in today's audiences, you can most convey your emotion and the drive behind a story by using noir techniques. And this everlasting effect that it has even on modern cinema and movies that came so far after it, even 70 years into the future now, we're still using those noir techniques. That effect that it's had on us is why I consider noir the most revolutionary film style of the 20th century and why I consider it the most important artistic style in cinema for the 20th century. And for that, I have to take my hat off to all of those directors. Thank you so much for bringing forth this idea that a movie doesn't have to follow those conventional styles and we can stray from that path. And that led to so many innovations in the 20th century, which are still going on today. So thank you, noir directors.